All right, I'm gonna walk you through a treatment, a contrast treatment for scoliosis. So we talked about scoliosis in our lecture. It's a rotatory deviation of the spine. Uh, on the concave side, we place heat. On the convex side, we place cold. So at this point, we would have had a conversation with our client. We would have explained the treatment. We would have explained the risks and the benefits of the treatment. Um, you would have discovered whether or not their scoliosis was functional and we could maybe mend some of those things and correct it a little bit with our treatment or whether it was anatomical and we're just placing this treatment on to relax some of the muscles that are always tight and we're not going to actually change the, the position of the vertebrae but we will, um, we can still apply this kind of a treatment because it will help some of the symptoms that they experience. So make sure you've received consent, that you've explained the treatment, and then we're gonna go in and do our treatment. It's a little bit tricky because we have two elements, heat and cold, and as you know, heat can stay on for a longer period of time to do the work that we want it to do, and cold has to be applied in a shorter, briefer application. So we have to kind of think ahead here. We have to plan um, all of our things. We have to get our heat and cold elements ready. I have my hot water bottle filled up and already wrapped in three layers here. I also preheated my heating pad. Um, I, I have two options. Then I know uh, taking a look at the person's back and the shape of their body, which heating element might work better for me. So I'm going to drape her back. And let's say that she has a C-curve scoliosis and the concave side is on the right and the convex side is on the left. We're gonna say that for this treatment today. So first I'm gonna place my heat on to heat up the concave side. So whenever you place a heat or a cold treatment, make sure that you get the person to take a nice deep breath in and exhale. We're gonna place some heat on. This is a hot water bottle with three layers, so it's gonna take a little while to heat up. While that is heating up, I am going to cover her back up, and I would go elsewhere in the body to do uh, a bit of work. So with scoliosis, there's usually a change in the hips. Um, one hip will be higher than the other, so this might be a good time to go and work on the glutes and the hips, do any joint mobilizations for the SI joints, which you guys don't know yet, but you will next year. Um, maybe you work on the legs, some of the shortened muscles in the legs like we talked about in the lecture. So I could come down and do some work into the hips uh, while that heats up. And remember, you're always asking and checking in about the heat, making sure that they feel okay, that they're not experiencing any symptoms of hyperthermia. And when it's finished, when um, you check the skin again and everything's pinked up and there's more blood flowing to that area and those tight concave muscles um, are starting to feel more flexible. Then I'm gonna think about, oh, this might be the time to get my cold element going. So I've already prepared a cold pack and I have a long skinny one because I'm using it along her spine and she's quite a thin person. So it's nice to have something long and skinny that's gonna fit the musculature of your person. That's why it's great to have a couple options laying around and making sure that you have everything prepared in your clinical space before you get into your treatment. So I've got the long skinny cold pack in here. I'm gonna roll it up so it has three layers of pillow casing on it. Now, when I unwrap her back here, I'm gonna leave the heat on and I'm gonna apply the cold at the same time. So Paige, I'll get you to take a nice deep breath in. And on the exhale, I apply the cold. Always, especially with cold, but even with heat, make sure that you apply on an exhale. Anytime you're changing the temperature, it can be a little bit shocking to the body. It's way less shocking and will create less of a startling effect on them if you get them to do it on an exhale. So now I am removing the heat source. And at this point, I can go in and do my deeper massage work on the concave muscles. So I can come in, the, uh, the muscles are heated up. What we're trying to do is lengthen and stretch these muscles that have been tightened. So we can get in with maybe some elbow petrissage work, any kind of deeper work that you can feel. Um, next year, you'll learn about 
joint mobilizations. You could do some spinal joint mobilizations. You can do trigger point work, especially in the erector muscles. Uh, you can do some scapular, passive scapular mobilizations, whatever massage techniques you choose. So maybe some cross fiber friction would be a good idea over the erector muscles, anything to help stretch and lengthen these heated tissues. So work here, be mindful of the cold application, um, check in, make sure that you've explained the cabin to them. So at what point is this page? Is it cold, aching, burning? Cold. Cold, yeah. I have enough layers wrapped around it that I knew it wouldn't get cold too quickly. If you were having less layers or choosing a more vigorous form of cold, they're going to get to that aching and burning a little bit quicker. So make sure you understand what you're doing with the cold here. Ideally, you'd probably only apply it for a minute. But if you have enough layers wrapped around it, you may be able to leave it on a little longer as you do your massage on the concave side. So once I'm complete with this side and I've really flushed out the area super well, I can remove the cold pack. And what the cold does is tightens and constricts those muscles. Those muscles have become atrophied and stretched and um, tight but weak. And so what we're trying to do is stimulate them with our cold. We're trying to get them to wake up, to uh, create strength in them, stimulate them. You can apply a little bit of a stimulating massage technique at this point. Usually I'd be on the other side. I'm showing you cross body. I wouldn't perform this cross body. I would be on the uh, same side to do this, but I can do a little bit of light to potent. We're just trying to stimulate those muscles and make sure they come back and create some strength in them. You could do some brisk compressions. So I've got reinforced hands, I'm doing some brisk compressions. This is also called rib springing when you do it over the thoracic cage and can be really good for kind of mobilizing the rib cage. So I might do some rib springing, some brisk compression, some topotement, but nothing else on that side. You would never get in and do deep tissue, um, trigger point work or deep tissue work on cold tissues. And so that's it. We've got the heat side, we've relaxed and stretched those muscles. We have the cold side, we've stimulated those muscles. Now I would cover this person back up. I would allow that cold side to warm up by working somewhere else. Maybe I flip them over and work on their head and neck to finish the treatment. However it is, you just have to think about it in advance and make it part of your treatment plan. And that's the scoliosis treatment.